Welcome. Welcome to Vanadium. I'm Chris Rankin. The more I learn about this mad world, the more mysterious it seems. I understand the appeal of diamonds. Maybe not the exorbitant cost, but I agree the luster of a diamond does create a striking, almost supernatural effect. Diamonds are also still at the top of the list when it comes to material hardness. However, I believe diamonds are generally overrated and not nearly as useful as rubies, for instance, because you can at least make lasers out of rubies. Diamonds are very hard and strong in a way, but you don't see even the emperors, kings, or pharaohs erecting columns or building bathtubs out of diamond. Even today, with synthetic methods available to make train cars full of high-quality diamonds, no one is making the strongest rope in the world out of diamond. No one makes much of anything out of diamond. For one thing, diamond, as hard and as strong as it is, it's brittle. It has no defect or damage tolerance. But what if you could make a diamond perfect? Would you overcome this issue? Would it still be brittle? Unfortunately, we'll never know for sure because in this universe, nothing comes without flaws. All diamonds, even the highest quality synthetics grown in the most carefully controlled laboratory conditions, cannot be perfect. Everything contains flaws. Everything is defective in a way. Every material, every solid, every diamond must contain imperfections due to entropy. It's written right into the laws of thermodynamics. The universe will just not allow perfection, even in the best diamond. And the slightest flaw will act as a stress concentration point where a crack can nucleate or begin, then propagate through the entire diamond crystal. There's nothing to interrupt the spread of the crack. When it comes to mechanical properties, that's the trouble with diamond. The crystal structure is so simple, so symmetrical, the interior paths so indistinct that the crack, the failure, once it starts, can go anywhere it wants. But what if you could overcome this fundamental limitation imposed by the 3D crystal structure of diamond? What if you took the chemical makeup of the diamond, the array of super strong carbon-carbon bonds, and transformed the three-dimensional shape into something perhaps more useful? What if you could take a diamond and flatten it out into a sheet just one atom thick? What kind of things could you make out of the strongest, lightest, and stiffest film ever conceived? What would it be like if you rolled it up or coated things with it? Oh, the things science could do. It turns out this is possible, and there is something out there like this. This new form of carbon was a fairly recent scientific discovery, but graphene, it turned out, had been hiding right in plain sight. Graphene is a sheet of carbon just one atom thick, and it's the new big celebrity in the material science and physics communities. It's still in the early stage of development. It was only discovered a few decades ago. It's still exotic stuff. Graphene remains the most expensive material on earth to manufacture per gram, but that's quickly changing as manufacturing methods improve. Graphene is also the strongest material known to man, with an intrinsic tensile strength of 130 gigapascals, or to put it a different way, 19 million PSI pounds per square inch, and a stiffness close to 150 million PSI. It's also incredibly light. A sheet covering one full square meter weighs less than one milligram, less than the tiniest grain of sand. What makes graphene so indestructible is the strength and stability of the chemical bonds between the carbon atoms in the sheet and the minuscule nearly imperceptible thickness of the material. These properties are what enable graphene to break so many records in terms of strength, electrical conductivity, and heat conduction, as well as a whole host of others. Graphene also shows a greater ability to distribute force from an impact than any known material, 10 times that of steel per unit weight. Force has been determined to travel through graphene at 22 kilometers per second or 13.8 miles per second. It's even been theorized that one could roll up sheets of graphene into cables strong and stiff enough to support a space elevator. The idea of a space station being tethered to the Earth 
in a geosynchronous orbit by a long cable seems crazy. However, it's really not that far-fetched. If you had a material strong and light enough to create the cable, even with the highest strength steels, the cable would need to be as thick as the entire state of Nebraska to support the massive forces involved in the space elevator. Only recently, with carbon nanomaterials like graphene, could something like this be technically feasible. Graphene was first observed, or rather stumbled upon, in 1948, when G. Roos and F. Vogt were looking at a lump of graphite in their electron microscope. They saw a few thin layers of something special coming off the edge of their sample. In 1962, Hans Peter Bohm published a study of extremely thin flakes of graphite and coined the term graphene for the hypothetical single layer structure. How does one produce graphene? How does this transformation happen? It's surprisingly simple and doesn't require much more than a piece of pencil graphite and a roll of scotch tape. It turns out this process can be MacGyvered. Graphene was isolated and characterized in 2004 by Andre Geim and Konstantin Novoselov at the University of Manchester. They pulled graphene layers from graphite with a common adhesive tape in a process called either micromechanical cleavage or the scotch tape method. The idea is that graphene is incredibly strong in the plane of the sheet but can be easily separated from an adjoining layer. This work resulted in Geim and Novoselov winning the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2010. And as the committee put it, for groundbreaking experiments regarding the two-dimensional material graphene. Their publication and the surprisingly easy preparation method they described sparked what has been termed the graphene gold rush. The scotch tape method isn't very fast or efficient, but it does, surprisingly, produce higher quality, more perfect graphene than any of the other more high-tech synthesis techniques. There's another way to produce it by shaving the graphene off the surface of graphite. In this method, a sharp single crystal diamond wedge penetrates onto the graphite source to exfoliate layers. In 2014, a laser-based, single-step, scalable approach to graphene production was published by Professor James M. Torres' group at Rice University. The technique directly converts the surfaces of plastic films right into graphene using glass from a powerful CO2 laser. Chemical vapor deposition is another way, and this is a common way for scientists and material scientists to essentially grow materials atomic layer by atomic layer from the bottom up using a hot chemical mist. Graphene can also be prepared and coated onto surfaces this way. Research into this wonder material has expanded and split off into many different subfields, exploring its many different exceptional properties. It's often said that the materials available limit what humans can create and invent. The Stone Age, the Iron Age, the Silicon Age. Nanomaterials like graphene and carbon nanotubes and metamaterials. I wonder what will define the next technological era. Thank you very much. I'm Chris Rankin, and this was Vanadium.